So in a recent video, I did a deep dive analysis and process around creating hand UI based on some inspiration from Oleg Frolov, and I had a lot of fun doing it. However, a lot of people wanted a full-blown tutorial on that, and so that's what we're gonna do today. But we're gonna go a little bit deeper in some aspects, such as pivoting or multi-nesting or multi-state flows. Now, if you wanna learn more about things like, I don't know, colliders, check out this tutorial up here, or if you've missed the general concept of the body rig, um, check out this link up here. I think there's so much meat into being an XR designer that I just can't put it all in one video. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, let me know with a like, subscribe, and yeah, let's dive into it. Okay, so to get started, headphones. Today, I wanted to call out that we are not gonna be using Figma for this project. I know, we usually use Figma to create assets, but today I want to use 3D assets. So why 3D assets? Well, in many ways, 3D assets have a lot more detail and are a lot more performant in some ways than just large PNG files. Now, if you are absolutely dead set in using PNG files, I have crafted a brand new Bezzy community file with the hand UI. And all of these icons are in the resources file under Iconi Cool version two, and I use them to craft my 3D icons. So what 3D icons are we talking about? Well, let's open up Blender. So I crafted these four buttons and these four buttons are actually quite simple to do. And if you're interested in learning how to create 3D icons, let me know with a comment down below. But I wanted to cover some fundamentals of creating 3D UI. So before we take all of this stuff and export it into Bezzy, let's take a look at the composition of what I made. Now, if we look deep into them, what I have, I have this icon, I have a stroke and I have a back. And so if I bring these into solo mode, I, the thing I really wanted to call out is the pivots. So let me actually look at this individually. So if we look at this back, you're gonna see this little orange ball and this is a pivot. Now pivots are incredibly important to get into place before you bring things into Bezzy because it really helps with composition. So if we go back into here, as you can see right now, the pivot is dead center at the bottom, not in the middle, but at the bottom. And if I look at, for instance, this icon, you're gonna see it's dead center in the middle as well. Now, this goes for every icon I have here. All of the pivots are very, very deliberately put into place. And if you also see, each one of these th objects is at a scale of one. You do not want to miss scale these. So if you don't know how to set scale, or if you don't know how to manage scale and stuff like that in Blender, I would say check out a tutorial. Another thing that I wanted to call out specifically is the colors of this. Now, it, seemingly, it looks like there's like two colors. There is this white and there's this black. But essentially, this has three or four different colors. However, it is using an atlas. Now, if you're not familiar with what an atlas is, well, there's a lot of stuff in this video that we need to go over, but an atlas is essentially one image that's super, super small that houses a bunch of different textures or colors so your objects can be more performant in XR or I guess in video games or any kind of 3D design in general. And atlases are incredibly important. Now, this atlas specifically used over here was made by Infenzia. I will link to him down below. But if we look at this icon right here, and if I open it up, I unwrapped it. We can talk about unwrapping at some other point. You're gonna see that it has a million different colors. So because all of this stuff is unwrapped, I can grab this section over here and I can just drag this around and you can see it's now green or it's yellow, or if I shrink it down, it can just be pure yellow. Or if I bring it up, it can be an actual gradient. But today I am actually gonna set it back to its white. So it is this nice, even gradient. However, if we grab this little section down here, you're gonna see it's actually not white, it's this dark gray. And I can move this in different locations. And based how I did that, it gets a little bit darker. So why am I using a different color on these icons and stuff like that? Well, fundamentally, it is actually a really nice hack to get some perceived lighting on an object. So if we jump out, you can see it has like this nice little indent feel to it, but it also feels a little bit darker. I mean, that's because I'm superficially adding darkness to it. And I did this for every icon we have here. And as you see right now, I have these really nice bevels that actually accentuate the depth. These little details actually, I think, make a lot of powerful UI. When light catches these little edges, it gives a sense of delight. And just that little detail work that I love. Now, if I zoom out real quick, let me hide this window up here. I am gonna export all of these things 
together. However, I'm only gonna export one button and the rest just icons. Now, before I go into that, each one of these buttons is 48 points wide. So why are they 48 instead of say, you know, 60 or 90 or whatever? Well, the minimum hit area that both Apple and Meta suggest is around 60 to 66 millimeters. But if we look right here, they are 48. So if I said that they're supposed to be 66 or 60, why are they 48? Well, fundamentally, if you have a 60 or 66 millimeter button in your project, it's gonna look like a giant saucer. And the way that we compensate for this is by adding a larger hitbox around the buttons. Now, this is a very, very common technique used in mobile design. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. They're 48 and they're set to one scale. So let's export these. So I'm gonna grab the bottom, the line, and this icon, and then I'm just gonna grab all of these icons. Then I'm gonna to go to File, Export, GLTF, and I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna restore this so you guys can see. And then what you're gonna see here is I'm gonna to go to Include and say Only Selected Objects. You can turn off animation, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna make sure that I name it accordingly. I just call this handui.glb. So I'm gonna export that. Awesome. So the next thing we wanna do is create a brand new Bezzy file. But before you go crazy and just create a brand new file and jump in, we have to do something very, very specific. Okay, so let's open up Bezzy. Okay, so do not mind the chaos that is my Bezzy folder. I create a lot of different things and test them out for our product. But what we're gonna do here is we hit new file. Now, when you start this project down below, I will include a template specifically for this hand UI. But if you're gonna start off like me, you can just click this hand collider UI. Now, what I'm also gonna do is that I'm gonna include the blender file down below in the description so you guys can you know, play with the icons and dive a little bit deeper into how they're done. And you may just wanna export them yourselves. So if we jump back into here, we're gonna see a rig we see a right hand box, a left hand box, and a directional light. Now I can just remove the directional light if we want. And this body rig is one meter away from center. Now the reason why things would be at center is for positioning. Again, we can talk about that later. But if we look at this individually, we will see these little boxes on the hands. Now these boxes are gonna be the trigger for our animation. We'll talk about that here in a bit. But what I wanna do now is I'm just gonna drag in my hand UI. So if I then hit Alt F, we're gonna see my hand UI in here. Now, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is start organizing this. So if I open up this section over here, I'm gonna hide my face. So we're gonna see icon button, home button, back expand, icon expand, outline, icon mail. Now, all of these names are very, very specific and I did this inside of my Blender file. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab all of these and bring them to the forefront and I'm just gonna delete the hand UI. And the reason why I did that is because I wanna make sure that all of the grouping is perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab all of these objects and I'm just gonna hit Control G and this creates a group. Now, if I type in millimeters, you're gonna see it's 48. We're also gonna see my atlas is in here, pretty neat. So we're gonna be focusing for a while on just this one button. So it's called this button, uh, I don't know, let's just say expand button. And inside of here, I'm gonna do a couple of different things. First, I'm gonna organize this a little bit. So I'm gonna bring my icon expand above. My back expand is gonna go underneath the outline, perfect. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this icon. I'm gonna hit Control G and group that again. And I'm just gonna call this Icon Expand Group. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because we're gonna be using this button as a template for all these other things. And because we will be switching out contents within this group, it won't affect the animation later. I guess this will make a little bit more sense in a bit. Okay, so with this done, let's start composing this to make sure everything looks good. So I'm gonna use middle mouse button and alt to basically move around my object. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this expand group and I'm gonna go to visibility and I'm gonna turn on crosshairs. Now this crosshairs is showing you the middle pivot of the group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all of these and I'm just gonna set this to zero on the Y. So now everything is set to the Y. And as you see right now, there's some wicked Z fighting, not a big deal. And for instance, if I grab 
this outline in this group. And if I bring it up about four, just type in four, Daniel, geez Louise. And then I'm just gonna grab this icon right here and I'm just gonna set this to eight millimeters. So everything is set very, very specific to the pivot of this object. Now, this is what I was kind of talking about at the beginning of the video when I was discussing the importance of grouping, nesting, and pivots. The more you start designing around the pivot and the constraints of your parent or the world, the better you will be as a designer and it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So always practice proper parenting structure and pivoting philosophy, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, let's dive back into it. So with this done, we essentially have our button crafted. So the next step we want is to make this button actually 60 millimeters or 66 millimeters wide. So how are we going to do that? So what I can do is grab this expand button and I'm going to go to colliders and right here it says box. And if we open up box, it's going to say auto size. So if I unclick it, we're going to see this little rainbow box. And this is the collider. And because it is set to auto, it is matching the exact size, which is around 48. So while with auto size, what I can do is maybe add eight millimeters to each side, and then it's gonna give me eight, eight, eight. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is eight millimeters too and eight millimeters tall. And then I'm gonna maybe change this to like 12 millimeters. Then I'm gonna go down the center and I'm just gonna bring this up on the Y. So it hits that base. So if we look at this right now, our button is around eight millimeters to the side. So that'd be 50, 56. So like 60, this is like 56. We can even bring it up if we want to, to make it an actual 60. But I think this is gonna be fine for now. I'm not gonna sweat it. I think it's gonna be fine for what we desire. So now we have our proper button crafted. Okay, so now this button is laid out. We can start our animation on this individual button. To start animating, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab every one of these objects and I'm gonna hit this little lightning bolt right here. And this brings up the state machine. And if you see right here, it has a little like number three that says basically there's three objects selected. So I'm gonna create some new states. In order to do that, I can grab this little green dot right here, drag, so that's state one, state two, and one more for that's right, state three. I'm gonna rename by double clicking state one. I'm gonna rename it hide. I'm then gonna go to state two and I'm just gonna say show. And then I'm gonna call this one hover. Sweet, if I select hide, every object now is on the hide state. Now with this, I can set it to zero and you can see everything is kind of flushed at the bottom. So a lot of Z fighting, no worries. I may even wanna take for instance, like this icon, bring it up here and bring this up here. And so basically, if I grab everything here, if I say hide, hover, so hide, show. So it's actually looking pretty cool, I guess. Nothing too exciting. So now, because I'm on show, we kind of already have that created. So now I wanna do hover. So with hover selected, I'm gonna grab this icon and I'm gonna change it from eight millimeters to 24. So it kind of explodes. And then with the stroke selected um, on hover, I'm gonna change it from four, I don't know, to 12. And then I'm gonna even change the size a little bit for scale to so 1.2. So this is what it looks like. And then maybe down here, what I'll do with the back is on hover, I may even just shrink it a little bit. So if I grab all of them, I can say on hide state, they're flushed. When they show, they're kind of raised on hover, they explode. Awesome. Okay, so with all of this done, I know I'm gonna wanna trigger these in different ways. So I know I'm gonna wanna go from show to hide when I twist my wrist. So on this little arrow here, I am gonna go and I'm gonna say pointer down, collider enter. And I am going to just essentially um, hit left hand box B, and I'm gonna say with left hand box A. So essentially when the colliders and the hands hit each other, it will trigger this animation. Nice. The next thing I'm gonna do here is I wanna go from show to explode. I want I, this to be an actual direct touch from my finger. So to do that, I'm gonna make sure I grab this arrow and I'm gonna switch it from pointer down to direct touch inside. And it's gonna be like, what do you want to direct touch inside? Like this is mixed. And because we have set this little bad boy with a collider, I can just go to this expand button. And when my finger enters 
this expand button, it will explode. Now I'm gonna want it to go back to show when my finger exits it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from hover back to show, direct touch out, and the exact same thing. So now the duration is, you know, 500. And so I know um, right now I am going to wanna spring out to make it kind of explode. And I'm gonna set this to, I don't know, let's say 650. So it's gonna explode out and then when I wanted to go here, maybe I wanted to do an ease and out, but I want this to be really fast. So maybe 100 milliseconds. So this is how it's gonna be triggered. Now, if we want it to hide again, it's fine. We can, you know, essentially figure that out a little bit later, but I think that this fundamentally gets where we want it to be. Okay, so with all of this done, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to then duplicate this thing and add all of the icons to it. So let's figure out how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in base, sweet. Now, because this expand button doesn't have a state on it, I can move it and replicate it and do whatever I want with it and it's not gonna affect the rest of the groups. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this and hold down alt and I'm just gonna drag, drag. And then I'm gonna move these and I'm going to drag. Sweet. So now we have four buttons. Now, if we really wanted to, we can go through here and open all of these up. And if I grab all of these, hide, show, hover. Okay, so we're good so far. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna replace the icons in here to be these little bad boys. We'll keep one of them, but I know right now I want my first button to be the home button. So I'm just gonna rename this one to home button and I'm gonna expand that. And then I am gonna, inside of here, it has icon expand group. I'm just gonna call this icon home group. Now, because we did our due diligence at the beginning by grouping this, I can essentially take this home icon, dump it in here and then zero it out. And I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and I'm just gonna remove this expand. So if I, for instance, grab all of these, and if I walk in up, up and down the tree, you can see that it works perfectly. So it's not gonna run into any issues. So we'll set it to hover like the rest of them. And I'm gonna make sure that all of these right here are gonna be renamed properly. So this is icon home group. So this one will be outline home, and this one will be back home. Now I'm gonna repeat this process for the email and the menu. And um, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we have everything done. So now we have all of these buttons. I already can tell you these things are gonna be massive on the wrist. So I'm gonna hit Control G. I'm gonna group these as buttons. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab these buttons and I'm gonna throw them into my left hand here. I am then going to take these buttons and I am going to bring them here. Awesome. So one of the things we may have an issue with is that these things may get a little bit confused when we do um, our finger in. So let's make sure we do a re-audit. This is where a lot of people are gonna run into issues. So what I'm gonna do here is I can say, collider enters, this is gonna be fine. Home button, okay. Home button, cool, that works. Next one, home button, home button. See, this is where we are gonna run into the business right here. So I am gonna grab this and make sure it's email button. See, this is what always gets my goat. And if I say span button, sorry, expand button, expand button, we're almost done. Menu button, menu button. Awesome. Now this would say is a feature and not necessarily a bug, but it is definitely something that I wanna fix at some point soon. Now with all of these buttons done, what I can do is I'm gonna bring these down and I know that again, these buttons are gonna be huge, it's fine. Um, we're just gonna test it out and we tweak it, but I'm just gonna move it below the wrist like here and I'm gonna set this to 180 and I know we're gonna run into some shenanigans here, but awesome. So they are not gonna be hidden right now. Um, I'm not gonna have them do anything too crazy, but you can get super complex with it. So the next thing I wanna do is 
in headset, I want to see how these will look. So yeah, let's go um, check that out. Okay, so as you see right now in this sweet, sweet wrist, they are working. And you know what? They're honestly not that big. I mean, they are big, but they could be smaller. But I think that they're going to be great for our little project. And as you see right now, when I do this, it's going to follow my wrist because there's no inverse kinematics. But let's test it out. So if I go, look at that. It has a nice little bounce to it. Do this one. This one. And watch this two fingers. Here's three. Awesome. So we are so close. The only thing we need to do is hide this sucker so we can pop in and out when we want. So let's go hide this and finish it up. Okay, now that I'm back in the file, I have noticed something that got by me, and that's that these colliders are expanding together. And this is causing some of those accidental hits. Now, if we look at all of these things together, if we look at hide, they are flushed and then they're growing. And the reason why they're growing is because on the top group that houses the collider, it is growing with all of the other objects inside of it. Kind of a pain in the butt, but it's okay. So what we're gonna do with it in its expand state, I'm gonna grab this menu button and I'm just gonna bring it out. I'm gonna grab the expand button and the group button, bring it out, bring it over here, grab all of these three, bring it out. Perfect. And say, if I say set the base, what you're gonna see is we're gonna see this bit of margin between them. And I think that that's fine. I think this is gonna fix a lot of that accidental hit space, but this is how you kind of catch it. You look at the visual signifiers. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab all of these objects and I'm just gonna say from start to here, I'm gonna install this hide. And then from there, I'm gonna say show, and then I'm gonna bring this back. Perfect. So what I want on hide is I'm gonna hide it, of course. And then when I'm on show, it's gonna be shown. And I'm gonna do exactly what we were talking about before. And I'm gonna say on collider enter, when left box A enters, left box B trigger. Okay, so after that, what I wanna do is I want it to have a fun little pop as well. So I'm gonna go to curve settings and I'm gonna go to spring out and I'm gonna keep the, I'm gonna have the duration be at maybe 750. And then I am gonna go to collider exit and I am going to say left box B to left box A. And I am going to, you know, maybe do the same things. You know what, Let's we're going crazy. I think, did they say 750? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Perfect. So now by default, everything will be set to hide. And maybe actually what we can even do to make it a little bit crazier, I am gonna bring it back a little bit. So when it pops up here, it's gonna have a little bit more action. Woo! Now, what we're gonna be dealing with here is that when I do this, all of them are gonna come up at once. Okay, so to stagnate them, let's go one by one. So I know I want this one to come in first. So right now, the delay, let's keep it at zero. Next, email. We want this to have a delay of 100. Perfect. And then right, we're gonna do here. This is gonna be, of course, um, 200 delay. And then I am gonna go to the menu button and I'm gonna make this delay of 300. Now, I want this coming back to be zero. And then right here, I'm gonna make this 100. And then I'm gonna go back to here, 200. Okay, I think this is all this is all tracked. And then here on the way back, I'm gonna set it to 300. So delay zero, delay 100, 200. Okay, everything's tracking. Okay, so everything should work right now. So when this collider enters, it will show it. And when it exits, it basically will hide everything. So yeah, let's see how that works. So let's see what happens. Not bad. I mean, we can probably change the duration to make it a little bit more crazy, but let's say if I go away, you can see they're going away like that. And if I bring it back, they kind of pop in, don't they? Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I wanted to call it a day here, but I had to tell myself, you know, these people sat through 20 minutes of this tutorial. They need something that looks better than this. So yeah, let's just make this a little bit tighter. Okay, so these buttons were way too big, but I think we can do better. 
So the first thing I want to do is bring down the size. Now I have this buttons group selected here and I'm just going to change this down to maybe 0.8. And I think that this is going to be the perfect size. This is starting to look a lot more reasonable, but the next thing we're going to want to do is change the collider size. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go to my box collider and then keep the padding at eight there from 12 millimeters and change this to eight. And then I'm going to change this to two. And I think that looks reasonable. So now I'm just going to do that to the rest. Perfect. So now as you see, we have this little bit of margin. We can change it if we want, but this looks relatively good. Now let's grab the buttons. Let's go to hide state and let's move them a little further back, like right here. And this is going to basically add more distance for it to travel. So it's going to be more dramatic. Awesome. I think this should be exactly what we're looking for. So yeah, let's go test it out. So let's take a final look at what we made. Much better. Look how much cleaner that looks. And then let's see if it goes back. Perfect. And that little bounce, you can tell the further along it gets, the more snappy it is. And right now you can see it is working just fine. Three fingers, one finger, remove. Wow, that looks actually really, really good. Let's see that again. Wow, that is really, really smooth. I am very, very pleased with what we made here today. Okay, with that, let's jump out and talk about what we made, shall we? Okay, I think that was pretty darn cool. As you see, this took about 20 minutes for me to explain all this stuff to you, but honestly, this could go a lot faster. And the more that we build with this stuff and ask for more features, it's gonna become more and more powerful. Now, body UI is just in its infancy. There's no right or wrong pattern, so to speak. It's just about how you can play with it and make it your own. So I hope all of these foundations got you thinking about what else you can do. Now, if you like this kind of video, let me know with like, subscribe. And for the love of God, if you make anything with hand UI, let me know in the XRD Discord or on social media somewhere. All the links are down below as well. So yeah, play with some files, have some fun, share, and make some friends. Okay, take care everyone, plus minus, and uh, yeah, see you soon.